Cystic fibrosis results from the failure of proteins and cell membranes, which allow chloride ions to pass out of the cell. The inability of the chloride ions to cross the cell membrane properly also affects the transport of sodium ions and of water in and out of the cell. The result is that cystic fibrosis victims, rather than having the thin, free-flowing mucus of most individuals, have mucus that becomes thick and sticky as a result of the lack of water in the mucus. About 1 in 20 Caucasians carries one of the recessive alleles for cystic fibrosis, and this results in 1 in 2,000 Caucasian babies being born with cystic fibrosis which translates into four or five babies born with the fatal disorder each day in the United States. In recent years, the knowledge of cystic fibrosis and advances in medicine have improved the quality of life for people with the disorder and substantially lengthened their life expectancy. This is the result of physical therapy, breathing exercises, modern antibiotics, and special diets. But eventually, the disease does prove to be fatal. Sickle cell anemia results from just a single amino acid being different in the polypeptide chain that forms hemoglobin molecules. This slight change causes the abnormal hemoglobin molecules to be less soluble and form crystals within red blood cells. The crystals distort the red blood cells into a sickle shape that gives the disease its name. In addition, the formation of crystals prevents the hemoglobin from carrying oxygen effectively and makes sickle cells rigid so that they often block capillaries. Blocked capillaries can lead to pain, fever, and weakness in affected areas. Clots formed by sickle cells can break off and cause stroke in even very young children. Like cystic fibrosis, the life expectancy of sickle cell patients is being substantially lengthened as a result of a variety of therapies, including transfusions, antibiotics to treat infections, and drugs that increase the oxygen-carrying capacity of the red blood cells. Sickle cell anemia currently affects about one out of 500 Americans of African descent, while about 8% are heterozygous carriers of the disease. In parts of equatorial Africa, one out of 25 individuals have the disease, while about 30% are carriers. Given the severity of sickle cell anemia, one asks why natural selection hasn't eliminated the sickle cell alleles. The answer may lie in the fact that being heterozygous for the sickle cell trait affords protection against an often fatal form of malaria. This form of malaria, like all forms of the disease, is caused by protozoans carried by mosquitoes that invade an infected individual's blood cells. Abnormal hemoglobin, which accounts for about half of the hemoglobin in heterozygous individuals, appears to hinder the development of the disease causing protozoans in an individual's blood cells, and thus often turns out to be the difference between life and death in heterozygous individuals infected with this form of malaria. In most other regards, such as health and physical prowess, the 50-50 combination of normal and abnormal hemoglobin appears to leave heterozygous individuals largely unaffected. In fact, many world-class athletes are heterozygous for the alleles that cause sickle cell anemia.